high intensity blasts explosions across the country at least 10 of them that we can report all within a week 10 explosions the question is why are high intensity blasts taking place in china are these freak accidents labs are blowing up trucks safely stationed in parking bays are also blowing up food streets are blowing up as are residential complexes it's hard to say they're linked but it's even harder to rule out foul play because you know it's china an explosion and fire at a university in the east of China has killed two people and injured nine. The accident happened in a science lab at the Nanjing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics. But here's something that you must consider. The blasts preceded the Chinese Communist Party's plenary. The timing is very significant. As we speak, the CCP's Central Committee is meeting in Beijing. A cold front is sweeping many parts of northern China, bringing the winter's first snowstorms from Sunday to Monday. Heavy snow has covered areas including in the Mongolia, Shandong, Tianjin and Beijing. Snow hitting China, leaving one person dead. Thousands were impacted by a blizzard in northeastern China. Check out this video. The early winter snowstorm hitting hard. Roads blocked, rail services suspended, and schools closed. In Inner Mongolia, where over 23 inches of snow fell over 46 hours. That's the longest on record since 1951. announcement at the UN Climate Summit in Glasgow. The United States and China have struck a deal to work together on tackling climate change. U.S. Climate Envoy John Kerry praised the agreement as a step in the right direction. Despite China's human rights abuses and military aggression, the White House is more interested in brokering climate deals. How in, your, in the several months of meetings uh, behind the scenes with China, did you bring up some of those very contentious issues, um, such as use, the use of forced labor? That's not my lane here. That's uh, my job is to be the climate guy. This is not a discretionary thing, frankly. This is science. It's math and physics that dictate the road that we have to travel. China and the U.S. aren't only the two biggest economies on Earth. They're also responsible for the biggest emissions of carbon dioxide and methane gases. The giant of Chinese politics, Xi Jinping. Behind closed doors, she is set to lay the groundwork for an unprecedented third term in office that would cement his position as Ch China's most powerful leader in recent history. The fact that China is trying to assert, understandably, a new role in the world as a world leader not showing up, come on. Chinese President Xi Jinping did not attend. World leaders flew down to Glasgow. Xi Jinping did not. He was missing both in person and online. He did not even make the effort to join via video link. Why did he not? Well, China has an interesting explanation and you won't believe what they said. China said, and I'm quoting, the conference organizers did not provide the video link method. So poor Xi Jinping could not join. Isaac, give us a little more context as to why this deal with China came as such a surprise. Relations between the United States and China have been, in a word, terrible over the last six months uh, since Biden took office and even before. And we were not expecting to see signs of a rapprochement, of a thaw, and this really just came out of nowhere. Even if you are singularly focused on climate change like this White House is, shouldn't they shift focus just for the time being to things like, oh, I don't know, the Chinese Navy now much larger than the U.S. Navy, things like the human rights abuses? Oh, absolutely. First of all, China is threatening the United States like it hasn't in a long time. And it's not just the size of their Navy. And there's new evidence tonight of China's growing military might. It's happening on multiple fronts and fast. So he has an enormous amount of power and he's structured the government in such a way that he has created a lot of these small committees or small standing committees as he calls them. And he chairs most of them. So he really is at the center of every major decision. And was due to stand down next year. But at a high level meeting, Xi has extended his leadership by at least five years. The Central Committee of the Communist Party passed 
the historic declaration at a plenary session in Beijing on Thursday, effectively changing the constitution. Now, one thing that's interesting that we're expecting to happen is that uh, President Xi Jinping and this uh, plenum is going to unveil uh, something called a historical resolution. Now, what is that? In 2018, China scrapped the two-term limit on the presidency, giving Xi the right, in theory, to remain in office indefinitely. Thursday's resolution puts that amendment into practice. Critics have been saying that we could see the return uh, satirical here, the return of some kind of uh, uh, emperor uh, to Beijing if uh, Xi Jinping was able to take a third term and beyond. We are witnessing a strategic breakout by China. The explosive growth and modernization of its nuclear and conventional forces can only be what I describe as breathtaking. And help China make new contributions to Africa and the world's peace and stability. We've got only a minute left. Big picture. You say China is in trouble and you worry that this wounded animal could be particularly dangerous to us. Why? Well, first of all, you've got simultaneous crises. You've got a stagnating economy, the rolling power outages, COVID-19 outbreaks, which are accelerating, food shortages, a rest of population deteriorating environment. I think that Xi Jinping is going to look for an enemy. Mao Zedong did the same thing in 1966, but he couldn't plunge the world into war. Xi Jinping, because of that large navy that you talked about, he can do that. But President Xi Jinping, according to China's official news agency, called for the Chinese military to break new ground and said China's capabilities have been enhanced by leapfrog development in equipment and weapons. Last August, China conducted a hypersonic test that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs compared to the Russians beating the U.S. into space. I don't know if it's quite a Sputnik moment, but I think it's very close to that. And it has all of our attention. It's the most significant public acknowledgement by a senior U.S. official that China conducted two tests of a hypersonic missile system this summer. Tests which were first reported by the Financial Times. We don't know about climate action, but China's moves in another department are real and dangerous. Beijing is in the middle of an unprecedented nuclear buildup. How do we know this? Because of satellite images. Hundreds of new ICBM silos under construction. A massive buildup which has forced the Pentagon to drastically revise the number of nuclear warheads China is adding to its arsenal. Richard, I mean, first of all, this is a game changer in terms of these weapons, what mm -hmm. they're able to do, and how the U.S. response would change as well. I mean, basically the general saying, we're not ready for this. Mm -hmm. We're how not ready for this. It has the potential of changing the, the balance of power between mm -hmm. the United States and China. It's an astounding uh, pace. Have yes. the Chinese ever done anything like that before? It's, it's far beyond what they have ever done in the past. Nuclear warheads could also be loaded on hypersonic missiles, which are harder to detect than ICBMs. China already has the world's largest armed forces, over two million strong. But it's a new breed of super-fast missiles designed to evade American nuclear defenses. Now you understand why this buildup is being called unprecedented. As we speak, there is construction going on underneath this air dome. And this is all happening in Ordos, which is in north central China. Similar constructions have also been spotted in Yumen, Jilantai, and Hami. What exactly is happening in all of these places? The Federation of American Scientists says it's a top secret and highly sensitive construction program. Their words. Reports say these silos are intended for missiles. There are at least 300 such silos under construction in China, 300. All of this is part of the PLA's modernization program. What's interesting is that Beijing has neither confirmed nor denied any of these reports. That such extensive silo construction has not been seen since the Cold War. But, but I want to get your take on this threat forcing Taiwan to boost reserve force training. The country's defense ministry said that it will be doubling down on combat and shooting exercises as China increases military activity nearly in the island general. And I was looking earlier at how much the world depends on Taiwan when it comes to semiconductors. I mean, semiconductors, obviously critical components that, that power electronics that we all need from cars to computers, uh, etc. 
I think what the uh, Chinese are undertaking at the moment is a rapid military modernization and expansion um, with the aim being to be in a position later in this decade to be able to use military force against Taiwan. Um, that is the critical mission at the moment for the Chinese military. Prepare for that conflict that could potentially occur in the second half of this decade. At the same time, um, as they're developing these uh, conventional military capabilities, they're also expanding their nuclear capabilities with a substantial expansion in the number of nuclear warheads and missile systems. What's your, what are your thoughts on all of this? This well, military so, activity near the island, what the U.S. is doing as well? Well, uh, President Xi has made a, you know, an objective of his regime to, for reunification, to take control of uh, Taiwan. And believe me, we are still yeah. behind. The balance of power in that region, Maria, as you know, has shifted militarily to China. That is a fact that it's yep. un undeniable. They also eventually want to be the number one military globally in the world. That's not the case now, but in the region, it certainly is the case in terms of available forces in that region. But what the public um, notices, uh, first of all, is an, an increase of personality cult. Uh, in the recent weeks and months, the state media have yeah, exaggerated their praise of Xi Jinping. It became almost absurd. I mean, it's comparable to the rhetoric of um, the North Korean regime almost. His message is that China is a superpower and the rest of the world better know it. The Chinese people will never allow any foreign forces to bully, oppress or enslave us. Anyone who dares try to do that will have their heads bashed and bloodied against the Great Wall of Steel, forged by over 1.4 billion Chinese people. Have you heard of this? Blasts in China. You may not have because Beijing is making sure most media do not report it. It is hiding high-intensity blasts, explosions across the country, at least 10 of them that we can report. All within a week, 10 explosions, 10 bomb blasts in one country in less than a week. And this is not Yemen we are talking about. We are talking about China. What's happening there? The first one was reported on the 21st of October. It happened in the Liaoning province. The blast took place at a hotel. It was high intensity, five people died, 47 others were injured. One day later, there was another blast, this time in Inner Mongolia. The blast was reported at a chemical plant. Again, it was high in intensity, four people died, at least three others were injured. Two days later, there were two more blasts. One in the Wafangdian city, another in Nanjing. The second one was at a university lab, a laboratory. It wasn't one of those chemical experiments gone wrong or a test tube blast. This blast killed people, at least four. The next day, there was another blast in another university. This time, it was the Shandong University's Huangdao campus. An explosion rocked the North Gate. Nothing has been reported on the deaths or injuries yet. A day after this blast, there were three high-intensity blasts in three Chinese provinces. The first one was in Shandong. Some trucks parked in the province's Zibo city mysteriously blew up. Some said the blast was so strong that people staying 20 kilometers from the blast site felt terrified. They felt the impact. The same day, two more explosions rocked Guangdong and Jiangxi. On the 27th of October, another blast rocked Guangdong. Now, we don't know very much about where exactly this happened or how many people were injured or killed, if at all. But we do know that on the same day, a blast also ripped through the city of Tianjin. So that's 10 blasts that we've counted so far. 10 blasts, 13 deaths, and many more injuries in just seven days in China. And that's just on paper. It's hard to tell how much worse this story is. The people in China have a lot to complain about right now. China's zero COVID strategy has fallen flat, for instance. The country is in the middle of a Delta outbreak. And this has been called the worst outbreak since Wuhan, since last year. 